good evening. Uh, welcome everybody to the City Commission study session, Tuesday, February 4th, 2020. Uh, please turn off or silence all cell phones during the study session. Meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 7 p.m. and midnight and available for viewing on YouTube. Uh, this evening's study session has five topics. The first topic is Main Street Annual Review 2019. So I'll ask Ms. Wendy Scheidt to come up and talk to the commission. How are you doing, Wendy? Good. How are you all? Hi, Wendy. I think we're doing pretty good. Staff? Yeah, we got uh, three of us here tonight. I have a quorum, but. Uh, okay. Well, you all got this in your packet, yes. so mm -hmm. I, you know, won't um, belabor it. Okay. It's been a busy year for Main Street. We feel like we're always productive. There's always something going on. Um, we consistently follow the National Main Street and the National Trust um, program of the four-step um, approach to downtown revitalization. We know it's proven. We know it works. And it shows in the first city because um, it's exciting here. It's full of businesses and merchants. And it is a destination. Um, revitalization is ongoing. Um, we know that businesses are fluid. Um, there's retirement. There's ones that just can't make it. There's ones that are following a dream that they really didn't plan for. There's others that are following a dream that they did plan for, and it's working well. Mm -hmm. um, but Main Street, we stay engaged and connected with all of them. Um, so I had... Um, 56 um, new business and uh, small business entrepreneurial contacts in 2019. We had 18 businesses that secured locations. Um, I follow up with all the other ones and the new ones um, on a consistent basis. I provided you a um, available properties listing. We, um, it's a really valuable tool. It's not real um, detailed. It's not a database or anything. But um, I use this all the time. I send it out a lot, uh, several weekly. If someone comes in, we work through it because they're looking for a location. Some existing businesses may be wanting to buy a building. Um, you know, we stay connected with that. So that's very important. Um, I also provided you this categorized listing of all the businesses that are downtown. I use that as well because as entrepreneurs are coming in and they may mention what they want to do, and, or they may not. And I say, well, do you have a good business plan? Um, have you really done your research on what your competition or your non-competition is? And so this is helpful. It's categorized. They can kind of take a look and see what uh, we have downtown. And then we um, frequently, uh, as often as necessary, publish our business guide. And this is a shopping and dining guide. Both of them have our 2020 uh, schedule of events on the back. The merchants receive these. We print ever how many they want. CVB takes these and puts them out. The hotels have these. And so these are really helpful as well to uh, let folks know that there is a lot of business and a lot of things happening downtown. Um, we are a resource network and uh, try and work with, with everyone. Any questions on that slide? No, that's good. Uh, um, we've had some really exciting um, uh, businesses open up this year that we've been fortunate to work with. Um, uh, Renee at Karma Cakes had uh, talked to me early on about wanting to expand, and we went over that available properties list and uh, really worked hard with them. I was really pleased um, when they decided on the large space at 5th and Cherokee. That was an underutilized uh, building um, a couple long-term tenants and all the other ones were kind of come and go and the building was really needing repair every time I was walking and looking up and thinking whoops something's gonna fall off that building so they made a huge investment in that a local uh, bank as well so we're this was that I know of her third expansion we helped her when she moved downtown from out on 4th Street and so she has really um, stepped up back uh, when the corner farm, the corner grill went out of business, she stepped up with lunches, um, and she's expanded that. Um, you can pick up things. She's open till five, uh, sometimes six. So we're excited. Um, you know me; I'm a preservation person, and I love to be able to walk through that building um, before they've done any work, and we could peek through and 
those uh, drop ceilings and see that gorgeous tin ceiling and um, the up, upper story offers a lot of uh, really in, a lot of interest and excitement. So I know that as soon as the weather breaks, they'll be painting the outside, um, and hopefully, um, when finances free up, build up, <laughs> sure. they'll be working on that upstairs. And another neat part of that whole building: when she purchased that building, she need, knew she needed four storefronts all yeah. in a row. So Fifth Avenue Frames, Crystal awesome. needed to leave. And uh, so she was thinking, well, I just might as well retire. You know, I go to Maine in the summer and blah, blah, blah. But we worked with a local business that um, had a available space that had not been renovated within their building. And so um, that worked out really well. She was That's able good. to, we provided some high school students to help her get all of her framing oh, stuff oh, out, nice. store it. She went to Maine, she came back, and her space was all renovated, and it's inside Reunion's Antiques, which is a really okay. nice compliment. That is. And so if you're downtown, go in Reunion's, take a look at her space. And so that was retaining a business downtown. Good. Um, down in the 600 block of Cherokee, across from Haymarket, um, there was a couple double buildings that had been um, underutilized, the restaurant that was in uh, 604 had been, uh, um, I don't know, since I've been here, five or six different restaurants. Mm -hmm. So Ree Proctor purchased those buildings and um, is putting her Thai noodle shop. Uh, she has done a beautiful um, renovation from floor joists that needed to be replaced. The back wall fell, had to rebuild that. Um, she's expanded the kitchen. It will be state-of-the-art, and so that is really exciting to see that happening there. Um, and then um, the First City Cheese Market is a tenant of hers. Uh, they don't own the building at 610 Cherokee, but that was the location they wanted. And we worked with Hannah from the her inception of her idea um, and reviewed her business plan, gave her all the funding opportunities, and uh, she went to the expense of renovating that storefront with her personal money, and it's gorgeous. Hopefully everybody's been in there. Um, a great addition to downtown. And so uh, I think um, Pat Proctor plans on opening something like a classic car showroom in the building that has the overhead door at some oh, point no. in time. Yeah. Right? Yep. So that'll be a fun addition downtown as well. Mm -hmm. on, on that block, or is it? Yeah, okay. it's, yeah. it's all part of okay. these four, yeah. this, this two double garage buildings. Right now, right. Right. Yeah. Garage right. door, yeah. 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 Um, there are four apartments that were above the uh, restaurant space, and uh, she has upgraded those, and they I hear they're just beautiful. So mm -hmm. we have more upper story. She's looking to um, renovate the uh, space above the First City Cheese Market um, at some point in time. Um, Burr Roaster was another business that came in, and it really complements downtown. Um, he roasts uh, coffee beans and puts together different blends. Um, some of our local businesses use his blends. You can buy it um, as beans or already ground. Um, this is a, a great new business. He's open in the mornings early, um, and I believe has some breakfast items. He closes a little bit in the afternoon. He's still a, a government um, I don't know if he's fully retired military? from the military. Okay. He may be getting ready to retire. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they're open late in the evening. So from oh. 4 to, I believe, 9 or 10, well, it's open good. down there. Oh. And uh, so that's after good. the uh, performances at the Hollywood Theater, um, whatever, that's, that's... That's nice. Yep, and it's just down from City yeah. Hall. So then uh, at 211 South 5th, this is one of the suites in Karma's building. Um, it had been vacant and... Uh, out at Spruce and Broadway, that building that Lee Gibbons owned had a fire, um, and the golf shop was there. And so um, he talked to us and thought he wanted to move downtown. So we worked with him, uh, Justin, and he relocated downtown. I said, gave him Karma's um, contact information. I said, I think that would be a great location. Needed a little bit of upgrades, and so he's down there. So he filled that space, and then there's an existing salon in the, her, her other space. Um, the Retrocade Arcade, we talked to him long ago when he decided to move from Platte City and uh, you know, I've been several places he looked at. He settled at 318 Delaware, um, felt he needed more space, moved to the Masonic building in that double building. Um, other than I wish his um, business hours were, he was open more. Um, it, it's a fun 
uh, experience business. Um, I take my grandkids, they love it. I think adults love it as well. But um, anyway, hopefully, because he works as well, right. um, business hours are important. So um, that's exciting that we have that new business. So as um, Renee was leaving um, with Karma Cakes, um, we met with Glenn uh, that opened Rosalind's uh, First City Bakery. That's um, a good place. Yeah, and so, you know, I love it. that <laughs> was a, a nice transition so that that uh, location didn't stay vacant. And we actually um, encouraged him to open um, before Thanksgiving. He was going to open in December. No, you need to be open by Thanksgiving. Yeah. And so sense. he geared up and got that done. And uh He's open on Sunday and says he has amazing business. Really? I didn't yeah. even know that. Mike, the best cannolis in town. Oh. Very oh. good. Oh, cannolis. I had Greg, yes. Greg swears by He's him. expanded yeah. and um, has some better tables in there. He um, does um, lunches and food, and, and you can order trays of some delicious um, pastas pasta. from him. So, uh, yeah. you know, I think he'll continue to grow there. Um, mm -hmm. 516 Delaware, uh, we knew that 505, she was located at 505 Cherokee, and um, that building has a contract on it, and the tenant was going to have to relocate, and so um, we uh, talked to uh, John Sawalski, that's a main streeter, and um, owned where the state farm agency was on Delaware in the 500 block, mm -hmm. so we hooked those two up, and it wasn't any time that... Um, Charity had moved her Fishburn Realty into that building and looks at buying that building. So that was another one that uh, State Farm was kind of wishy-washy if they were going to stay, if they were going to bring another agent here, and uh, decided they weren't. And so anyway, mm -hmm. that was another thing we helped facilitate. Mary Weathers has uh, been here several years, does a really great business, um, and uh, they have been in a building that has been under-maintained, um, many leaks, gone through a lot of things that they paid for the ex uh, expenses themselves. Um, a building owner that wasn't a great uh, um, asset for downtown and so now they finally purchased the building okay. through a couple other avenues that um, transpired but we worked with all of those resources and so um, there's some exciting things going to happen there. So, there yeah. a, you know, great corner and, and they love where they're at. So, the, you know, you guys know the, the concerns we have of the 600 Cherokee building with the sign that still says Club Venom. Mm -hmm. um, it's just I've had so many interactions with that owner this year. I've driven to Lawrence uh, Toganoxie to pick up keys. Um, he is just not willing to, he tells me 200000 net. I don't even know if it's a sellable building, but we've met with Paul, and there's, there's buyers for it. Uh, so hopefully, you know, working all of us partners together, we can make something happen there. I believe the building is sound. Um, it needs some significant renovations that are costly, um, but it's a great corner. It has it parking. It has additional suites to lease. It has upper story. And so, um, you know, we'll... Uh, is the roof leaking? Do we, do we know? It or? leaks a little bit, right. but it needs, it it needs, needs a roof. roof. Um, mm -hmm. It probably needs HVAC and electrical and plumbing. It's a big um, expense. But there's so much potential there. Sure. Um, and uh, so anyway, we'll keep plugging away with that, and any type of marketing that, you know, we could all put together would certainly be good. Um, the Lee's Furniture Building, known as the, it's the Edinson's Building, it's, um, you know, I think really gives downtown definition, and it adds character. Um, it's unfortunate that... Some of the uh, beams and flooring have been removed from the building. Um, I would hope that that can't happen in other buildings. I don't know how to stop that. But um, anyway, um, I know uh, the owner has commented that somebody that could utilize the opportunity zone should purchase it. Um, I've referred him to Taylor, and Ken Bateman is um, part of Main Street that's very knowledgeable on that. So... They're, 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 they're prob these two properties have been problematic, basically, right? I mean, for many years. Well, I know they've been them forever. Right. <laughs> for the 14 years I've been here, yeah, there has not been long anything long in it. Now, yeah. Yeah. the Lee's building, I worked with. Sure. Uh, um, and I guess the owner uh, for the Lee's building just decided not to do anything with it. 
after all. He's probably just waiting for a developer to come in. Okay. Um, I've sent him numerous small business owners with some pretty good plans. Uh, some of them were um, athletic type yeah. activities that co could go in it, but he generally tells me the utilities would just eat a small business owner up. And so there's a lot of things that could be looked at for that. Um, I think it could be mixed use in mind. Divided, with, uh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've been told there's uh, community huge. folks that would like to uh, be able to purchase a condominium. So they don't want to own a building, but they want to purchase their space in an upper story. So those are, you know, you purchase your condominium. We don't have any of those. Um, and I've talked to John about that. But um, anyway, I think... Uh, I think it would be a great candidate for one of these rock climbing uh, businesses. And there, <laughs> yeah. are some, there are some of those yeah. that have, like, um, yeah. they have franchises and they're national chains. But, mm -hmm. and, and maybe this has been looked into. But, I mean, in terms of the size and the height mm -hmm. of the building... Um, and that's a couple of the businesses I've talked to, but they're yeah. uh, more on the small business yeah. side. Yeah, small business um, would be tough. But one of them um, has a full-time... Um, position so um, you have to look at that too because it really needs to be a dedicated well-run oh, yeah. uh, very marketed type of business like that to stay in business so we'll continue on that but maybe we can work on some kind of marketing plan okay. um, this is just our budget and uh, where our uh, how we operate our organization um, we always provide you with a pro forma budget when you're uh, working on your budget. Um, obviously, that's generally higher because that's kind of a guess for us. Mm -hmm. It was about $182,300. Um, we adjusted that down um, to one thirty six six because we had um, uh, our major fundraiser was very good, but it didn't come in to what our projections were in our budget. Um, we did not do our playing cards this year because we just had a volunteer that was overworked and didn't have enough time, and our barbecue didn't happen. And so when we look at those, you know, that's the reason it, it goes down. It doesn't mean that we're doing any less of a job or we're doing less marketing. It's just that some of those projections didn't come in. And so, um, you know, 339% return on your investment, I think, is excellent. Plus, the uh, number of volunteer hours are just right. tremendous that um, our volunteers provide. Mm -hmm. Well, do you have any questions on that one? Uh, no, I like well. the way you laid no. that out. Pretty simple and mm -hmm. straightforward. We have financial business, and I failed to put nonprofit and friend investors in that dues category. So mm -hmm. um, that's uh, where our uh, dues come from. And we're a 501c3. Uh, incentive without walls, we've had this um, long before I came, um, but um, we didn't have a whole lot of money to loan. Um, when we had Kansas Main Street in the beginning, as we had projects, we would apply for money for loans, and then that would be kept in our local account as a revolving fund. Mm -hmm. So I built that up, and it's at about 52800 um, Doesn't sound like a lot. But that continues to revolve, and we've had, um, uh, what's that say, uh, a number of loans over the, over the course of yeah, happiness. over the course, and uh, you know it amounts to uh, three hundred fifty thousand plus in downtown reinvestment. Yep. Um, so um, we keep that loaned out. Uh, it's a no interest loan. Um, the board approves it now. And now that we have a Kansas Main Street. We've asked if there'll, if there'll be more money that we can apply yeah. for, and so we'll try and do that. But we generally do it for anything that's going to stay with the building, usually not product. Um, okay. That's good. I think it is important that now you, you can at least ask Kansas Main Street, which has been reestablished. Yeah, for, it's a good thing. You know, in terms yep. of and Kansas Main Street doesn't provide any um, monetary right. resources for us. They provide training and uh, um, other contacts, but um, this money, um, I believe, comes from the lottery uh, where they got it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. we sign a mem memo of agreement now with Kansas Main Street annually to retain that and report our, our figures. And I uh, payments are due monthly. I don't do any three-month, six-month payments from businesses. It's a monthly uh, loan payment. Okay. Well, let's see. You know, the 
we do a lot of things that you know really aren't particularly for the merchants. I think it helps because the Banner of Honor program brings folks down. It's it's military related. Uh, we have a waiting list for that because we only have 52 locations and it's an annual program. The pole banner program is not where the uh, Banner of Honor banners are. It's in the other part of downtown. Right. Those are the ones that have a business name attached to them. Um, the American flags on Delaware that we put up and take down are funded by us. Um, we do a really nice Veterans Day VIP reception after the parade. And you've all seen our mural on our building. Um, we're uh, yeah. in the process of printing the Shawnee Art Walk brochures. Um, that Because Shawnee Street really had the most amount of public art already on it, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So um, we've done a nice brochure that I will get to you as soon as that's done. And so we will expand that and add to it as more public art is put on Delaware and Choctaw and various locations. But there's some really interesting and exciting things going to happen. And I know Nancy's been involved mm -hmm. in those talks in 2020. So um, is the mural on your on the side of your building? Is that still have more to more to go? The whole one story building when it warms up, she'll be okay. working on that. So it goes all the way to the alley. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and she was really out nice there so on Friday <laughs> and Saturday. Oh, yeah. And looks, I believe it Sunday, looks wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and even Monday morning she was working as long as the weather mm -hmm. permits. That's eye catching. No mm -hmm. question about so, that. Um, let's see. We have our two uh, board members that are appointed by the uh, city, and uh, they're active. And we're really glad to see the wayfinding signs finally <laughs> done that we initiated. You all picked up. And yeah, that got those them look very nice. And I think that'll really be beneficial to folks as they're zipping down Fourth Street, Seventh mm -hmm. Street, or Broadway that they realize that they're. Are yeah. those type of mm -hmm. things um, in between? Um, we feel like the majority of our activities do have a great economic impact to the city, the county, the state. Um, and so, as we are doing events, um, promotional events, they're either downtown awareness that we actually have a downtown when we're bringing people in. It could be directly related to merchants' businesses. It could be cash register ringing events for those merchants, because that's important. Or it could just be destination experience type things. So most all of these events um, add to the economic impact. And when we do the loft tour, it's always well received. And um, we either um, recruit some folks to live downtown. We've had people buy a building uh, based on our loft tour. Um, and so, anyway, that's In terms of the upper story lofts, has that been a trend over the last several years that more people are, you know, buying or renting those lofts and living living there? Has that been a, is that something that's increased or has stayed well, pretty much the same? Well, I think it's increasing, obviously, you know, we've got the stove lofts, and right. now you've got the ones at the Blue Bridge, and the I was talking Primac within, like, building. the 28 block portion yeah. of, uh, yeah. Well, like it's downtown. increasing. It's, um, you know, we, we, um, certainly watch the codes and, right. and, and look at all that because um, it's expensive to uh, renovate upper story. Right. It's important though because it provides mixed use development. Mixed use development mm -hmm. provides more people living downtown uh, to eat, right. shop, play, do all those live, things. Yeah. So we've got about nine um, building owners that are looking at upper story development Good. and some of these uh, locations uh, have not been um, updated for many Pretty years. Mm -hmm. So we think that'll be a good thing. There may be more of a parking issue. Parking issues are good things. Mm -hmm. um, it may um, move the city to look at um, uh, a multi-level parking garage um, or garages. Um, but um, we are really fortunate that we have a large downtown and right. uh, um, it's uh, full service. So yes, to answer your question, yeah. um, okay. I think it is increased with the upper story development. Yeah, yeah. Recent, and recent living. Years, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, these are just pretty much the events that we do annually. Um, other than our annual banquet, everything is geared towards um, small business downtown development. Um, did did the downtown? Do you think have a pretty good? Holiday season? Or some, they know? had a good holiday season from the merchants I've talked to. Um, 
just because the way the calendar fell, everybody was yes, a week short. Right. And so that really hurts. Yeah. Um, but uh, made the most of the time that they had. Well, they did. <laughs> and our shop small Saturday, that Saturday after uh, Black Friday, was just a little down, maybe by five hundred dollars from what it was the previous year. But that's about seventy-five thousand dollars in sales just at those twenty-two. Yes. 24 participating oh, merchants. Small business center. Yeah, I was out and it was busy. Yeah. And so Main Street awards 10 bundles of 100 Main Street bucks to 10 folks um, for spending $25. So they get those tickets. We actually count those tickets and um, it's exciting to see those because they recirculate in the community and we continue to repay those. Um, and so um, you know, when you consider the many restaurants that are downtown that don't participate, because it's kind of a hassle to give t people tickets when they eat a meal, <laughs> and um, the other businesses that are open, um, you know, we know there's probably a quarter of a million done just on that small business Saturday, which led us to do the Shop Small, um, the Christmas in July event, which is a similar event. They mm -hmm. just, their, their tickets are $20 that they get a ticket for. They're, they're spending receipts. Um, mm -hmm. We talked about upper yeah. story development. Uh, any questions on that? Is there anything else? I mean, you have to work with the city, you know, on the, on the code things. And, I mean, we've heard that with some of the update to the building codes and things mm -hmm. like that. But you think good relationship between the city and, I and, think so. and the I think we'll people probably, who are trying to do this? Know, yeah. Reach out and, okay. and work cl more closely with codes and police and fire right. and um, to hopefully make that happen but like I said I've got nine building owners looking at that right now Good. and so those are major investments that they're going to make uh, downtown many of the many of the opportunities network Kansas doesn't fund residential and so that opportunity doesn't exist for that so um, you know we proposed a, a couple of things that maybe could help that initial large development and we'll continue okay. to talk to the city about that okay um, our social media is very active. Um, part of the uh, uh, advantage of being a Main Street investor is because we really promote on social media and other avenues. Um, there are many uh, posts that what they're doing, and uh, so we. So you have a website, Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Instagram, or anything? We or? have Twitter. Okay. Uh, Twitter. Not okay. very active on Instagram. Okay. Um, and we do, um, you know, quite a bit of co-op advertising and okay. pass those savings along so that. Um, that's print or TV or radio okay. uh, so that we are investing in those opportunities and offering that to uh, the business owners Good. as well. And I think that's it. We that's it. greatly appreciate wow. your time, your investment in the organization, the hotels. Um, you know, we, we work closely with the Hampton and the Home Two Suites. And uh, so Carolyn at Home Two Suites, hopefully yeah. you know she was one of... 25 Hiltons that was honored for good. top Hiltons in the country. She's off at her conference in Anaheim now. I haven't heard anything. I really would hope if she really she might be awarded one of the top uh, performers, but um, she's really active with downtown and uh, the community. And she's one of the your committee heads, right? Uh -huh. She's Main the Street design board. committee chair on mm -hmm. the board. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Can I ask just two questions about, um, just very quickly, I saw on Facebook that um, the pot rack, uh, Ollie and Catherine West are going to be retiring, maybe not immediately, but so it would be really nice if somebody came in and was able to carry on with their business. She mentioned that in her, um, in her uh, post, but what do you think? Uh, well, they, they talked about it a couple of years ago and um, kind yeah. of changed their mind. Um, you know, I, I get it because... Um, um, I think Ollie's a little older than Catherine, and um, you know, there's only a window of opportunity. Sure. Um, yeah. uh, nobody's beat that final alternative, <laughs> so <laughs> um, you know, we will. And as I told um, both of them, we will do everything in our power to try and help them Good. find someone to buy the business. They're going to retain the buildings, and um, those will be leased to whoever. Hopefully, someone that wants to purchase mm -hmm. that. That business, um, they've really built it up well. They've, they, it, it's just a tremendous business. So, good. Um, you know, we'll hope. Uh, same thing with uh, the Uniform Connection. It wasn't quite the same type of business, 
but you know, I talked to her and, and gave her some resources and encouraged her to sell that business, um, mm -hmm. as we did for the party store, and they did sell that business. So um, we are working uh, now on another business that she would like to retire. Her husband's been ill, and uh, uh, we have a buyer for it. Uh, she just has to sell her house in another state, and that is ready to go. But you know, it's it's sometimes contingent on things. So. Um, Anyway, we'll hope that. Um, and I had one other question because uh -huh. it was in the same most. On somebody else mentioned it in, in terms of a comment. The uh, bakery delicatessen mm -hmm. are they are they closing or? They closed on Saturday. I was in there okay. on Saturday, and, and we knew that they were transitioning. I okay. believe there's a new bakery going in there. Not, okay. That's not the yeah. Czech bakery, okay. but another okay. type of type bakery. Of bakery. Um, um, mm -hmm. That's and good. so you know, we always hate to lose that. Sure. It was delicious. I know. Yeah, they were it was wonderful. Good. Okay, mm -hmm. I just wonder. That's yeah. saw that in the comment, and I appreciate the yep. update on that. Yeah, so we okay. try and um, you know we uh, uh, it's great that Luigi Luigi's transitioned, and yes. we helped mm -hmm. Andy in that transition, yep. and uh, um, you know that's just really growing well. She's local, um, yep. and I think that makes a difference. It does. Um, and the only thing I forgot to mention was this funding opportunities that uh, sheet I gave you. Mm -hmm. That's another valuable resource that we maintain and. I hand out or email to um, businesses and entrepreneurs so that they know how to contact the different entities that have some type of um, funding opportunity. And certainly I sit on the Girl Over County Board and I'm the treasurer, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Taylor is the expert yeah. in the city and uh, Tim Dossie is the expert in Lansing and the county. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a great program as well. So... We just try and um, do everything we can to help them be prepared to be in business uh, for the long haul and to grow their grow and be successful. That's what everybody wants. So thank you. Good and report. Thank yeah, you, Wendy. Good, good report. Wendy. Good update. And best to Marley. I know who uh, is, you know works with you very closely yep. and the members of your board. Yep. Well, you always do a good job, Wendy. You and the <laughs> she's board. passionate yeah. about. She couldn't come tonight. She but she got Holly. Left Jen stitches. I'm sure more so than me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next uh, item is the 2018 International Fire Code. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioner, our Fire Chief Gary Birch is going to come up. Um, the title of this item is a little bit of uh, a little misleading. We've already given consensus to move forward on the fire code. This is the administrative, the local administrative policy on open burning. Okay. So okay. the fire code itself has gone forward. It's so yeah. we've talked okay. about this a couple times. This has to do with um, a recommendation from the fire chief. So uh, we've we've heard it a couple times. We'll just have him go over it uh, briefly and then having discussion. The commission uh, would like to have on that. Okay. Good evening. Hello, Chief. Hello. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you know, like, so we went over this a few times and uh, hearing from some of the constituents and stuff. Uh, in fact, I've, uh, since we proposed this the last time, making the exception to go ahead and allow burning, but have two, uh, two windows, spring and fall, where they could actually burn, much like they're doing now, but just have those windows. We would still go out and do permitted. Uh, I did hear from a couple of residents that, that did like that, that oh, we wouldn't do that. So, uh, so what we just proposed was, in fact, uh, one gentleman that called me actually, you know, and there was nothing said in concrete last last time we met. He even suggested, because I think I said like April or something, he suggested, well, you know, because the weather, April 15th and May 15th, so I just wanted to change it to that. Okay. And then in the fall, September 15th, October 15th. Mm -hmm. kind of in fact, you, you heard from Dr. Gillette, right? Yes. Because um, yes. he was here on the two two previous occasions when, right. we, yes. <laughs> when yes. we've discussed this issue. Mm -hmm. So, And he actually That's called crazy. me, and, and he's one who suggested that the dates kind of change sure. the dates just a little bit. Sure. So I didn't have a problem with that at all. I, just, I was looking for like a spring, fall type of thing, kind of clean up and... Uh, Anyway, so that's kind of what we're proposing, just to add that into the, the exceptions, uh, is open burning on the, on those two, on that day, those occasions each year, twice a year, by permit. And that, and by the way, uh, is that, would that permit be good for both of those windows, one in the spring and mm -hmm. one in the fall, or you have to two get a separate. permit each, you two, have to get two separate? get a permit each time, yes. Okay, any cost for the permit? No, okay. we don't charge. We do go out and just make sure it has the right distance and... And that's the brush place. and tree debris twice twice per year. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. what do you, uh, I was wondering what my fellow commissioners thought about. Um, I I talked to Chief about maybe expanding on both of those windows 
by 15 days, in other words, 45 days in the fall, 45 days in the spring, just to give a little more um, flexibility or a little Especially more. Especially depending on the weather, if there's yeah. drought or something. Right. You know, right. yeah. So would you have a problem with that, uh, Chief, if we, yeah. if we So wanted... would you go like April 15 to later in May? Whatever the days are, 45, 45 days in each yeah. one of those that's windows. Yeah. And that's kind of yeah, that a, would... an internal thing that we... You know, that we, that we'll yeah. post on a website and stuff, and the form stuff yeah. would be no problem doing. Because then yeah. that ends up being about three months, a quarter of the year that that you can do that. That that is available to the to the residents. So, um, any see, other questions about uh, burn barrels or anything? That was a big. I still would, I still would like to see that in here yeah. with a permit, but I think yeah. I'm probably the only commissioner that feels that way. <laughs> so, I'll state that I would let it go. You know. For now, yeah. but I, I would prefer to have that in there, but obviously that's not going to happen. So let's move on. I did. I did receive emails from both Commissioner Wilson and Commissioner Pricinger. Commissioner Pricinger is in favor of it as is. Uh, Commissioner Wilson was in favor of um, um, adding a burn barrel to the exemption list. So I'll okay. just let you know that. Yeah. All right. Um, I just think and we've been able to study the whole thing about burn barrels. I mean, that's smoke because it like it. Uh, the fire going is at a pretty low rate, and it creates um, some smoke. toxic toxic smoke. Right, yeah, and you can probably it, complete combustion. Less, yeah. Is, yeah, it can, right. can cause some real health problems. I know. Yeah. So um, I'm comfortable with what I, uh, okay. the chief has recommended, and um, except if you could do the 40, I think we have a consensus maybe going from 30 to 45 days for each of those I windows. Push it like the May 30th. Is that what you're thinking? Either like that or on the front I'm end, fine. Or whatever. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just however, like, you April, want okay. April, however, we usually get showers. You think okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Whatever you whatever think you on think. 45 days. Okay. okay. Sure the All right. So, chief. any other discussion or comments? No. Nope. So, do no. we have a consensus on moving forward with the process of adopting the, this policy with respect sure. to the burn? Burn. So burn. the consensus, it, yes. it's an administrative policy, so it won't come back. We'll just okay. get the okay. consensus from you, and then it'll be put in place by the fire department and be posted on the city's website. And, all and it sounds like places. you have a consensus to go yes. with the way it is right now. With so the 45 fine. days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, with 45 Extending days. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the other two that? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McDonald's coming up, and this is the topic design options for second and chestnut stormwater repairs. Mr. Mayor and Commission, this is um, a large stormwater project generally in the area of second and chestnut. Um, uh, consultants from Wilson have been hard at work on this. They're uh, completed the study, reviewed it with staff. They're closing in on completion of design. There's a couple, uh, two areas that we wanted to get a little input from the Commission. Um, uh, once we tie that up, we'll get that direction to Wilson, and then Wilson will complete the design, and then we'll go to design and then bid. Um, I'm going to have Mr. McDonald, uh, Mr. Hooper go through those two project areas. In your packets, we did identify three options at each location and a staff recommendation um, for those areas. So, Mike, if you want to go through the, the project. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, this is basically an update on the uh, uh, design uh, status of the design, the report that's been uh, has been prepared by Wilson and Company. Uh, the next step in this process is if we can resolve to move forward uh, this evening, they will bring back the contract to uh, do the final design the project, which will uh, take place in 2020, and we expect this project would be constructed in 2021. I've got uh, uh, there's a handy handout of PowerPoint. Sure. Uh, this is really related, uh, there's some overlap with material, but this is related to the system that we call Second Chestnut. It is really uh, <clears throat> about 126 acres bordered uh, between Second Street and Fourth Street and also uh, from Chestnut to Spruce Street uh, in a broad sense. And this is a system that is probably as old as uh, Leavenworth. It has uh, it was one of the first things that had to be constructed in these neighborhoods for the streets. Uh, the storm drainage follows uh, the, the creeks, mm -hmm. and as the creeks, as the storm drainage is built and the streets are raised, the lots get pushed down, and ultimately your storm drainage is built with uh, uh, late 1800s technology covered with a lot of dirt. Uh, it's been on and off maintained over the years, but it is uh, in a dire need of uh, major help. And 
we hired Wilson to look at some options. Uh, we explored things because the system is so deep and it's so large. The uh, uh, portions of this have been fixed over the years. The, the part that's uh, basically over here where uh, it, uh, Dollar General is uh, mm -hmm. was a, a part of a significant improvement that was done a number of years ago. And the city has done repairs uh, at least twice in 10 years where the, uh, the ponded water eroded the bank and created an unstable situation around the, the gas station on 2nd Street. The uh, uh, project concept that we worked with on, uh, on Wilson, uh, with Wilson to get to was essentially the, the rational choices to replace the existing system, which varies from uh, typically 60 to 66 inch stone pipe all the way up to 72 inch, although there is a section of 48 inch pipe that somebody put in uh, in one of the vacant lots over over the years. It's it's all in uh, 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 kind of marginal to worst condition. Essentially replacing the main system with 72 inch concrete pipe. Uh, that's about 915 feet of pipe. And then you're connecting uh, two or three subsystems into that uh, with another 1,000 feet of pipe uh, ranging from 24 inches up to 42 inches. Uh, the 72 is is only on, on the main system. There's a, a significant uh, number of inlets and junction boxes. They tend to be really deep. Uh, parts of the system are 30 feet deep. Most of it's uh, probably 20, but a lot of it is, is 30 feet deep. And in addition to all of that, you have the, uh, 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 the there's some pavement. We'll have uh, roadways to restore, or some sidewalks to restore, and of course, the, the surface uh, restoration. This is a little uh, different view of the same thing, uh, with the north being to the upper right. This is second. Chestnut basically shows uh, this old system wandering through. Mm -hmm. and this is the Pizza Hut at the corner from mm -hmm. the fourth and Spruce. And uh, identifying the, the system that be expanding to the south and to the north, essentially on the east side of the Justice Center, a lot of water that comes down there that floods that intersection at the uh, second chestnut, and we, if we can get the water in the system before it gets there, yeah. we'll, we'll reduce the problem. That's a pretty large area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so at least yes. it, it's uh, uh, interesting. <coughs> uh, they did it kind of uh, right, I guess you would say, when they built it originally. It, it's size, basically right. correct. Uh, we were uh, are not aware of a known history of uh, residential flooding. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Every time it rains, my basement floods type problems. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we were we were pleased with that, but we ultimately decided there there was nothing uh, to be gained by trying to save parts of the existing sure. system. Yeah, okay. a, that was a good idea not to do that. So we end up kind of with two uh, two odd situations that uh, uh, just want to bring to the commission for a sense of direction. If we can. Uh, kind of know where we're going with these two items, then they'll uh, finalize their design contract and bring them back to us. Uh, the decisions that are made here uh, should not be considered like the final decision. There's always going to be opportunity for discussion on a large project like this. But the, the recommendations of staff for these two locations are, are shown above. Uh, the first is 300 block of Olive. It's a vacant lot. And I'll, I'll show some pictures uh, on that in a second. Uh, what do we do with that? And uh, 200 block of chestnut, we're proposing to reroute the new system to avoid uh, a real uh, difficult situation with yeah. some system building. Definitely. Uh, this is uh, the 300 block of Olive Street, and I'll use the pointer here. Uh, this is Olive Street in the south side. The properties uh, in here uh, are owned, it's, it's a, a deep hole, it's about 20 feet deep. Uh, it's uh, Owned by the city, I think the county owns an adjoining piece of property there. <clears throat> and in 1966, we've shown the, the contours, basically shows the safe, shape and size of the, uh, the low area. Uh, and there was an, an extra house here that uh, is not there anymore. Uh, this is the current layout. The size of the opening is much smaller. It's been filled in with who knows what over the years. Yeah. And the staff uh, recommendation is uh, that the current uh, channel would be uh, uh, constructed through with the pipe. And I'll go over here to this. We would construct a pipe through the low area of that. We would fill it up to match the yards on the on each side. It would be uh, a bioswale in that water that's within the block 
that currently goes into that. It's not taking water off the street, but water that comes off the yards in that block would run through uh, essentially a, a biological filter and then enter the stormwater system. We've done similar uh, bioswales on uh, the Stubby Park stormwater repair project and also the uh, projects we did up off uh, between Broadway uh, and 7th Street along Ottawa. Uh, and then some of the other options are you can just leave it a big open hole or you can you know, do some other things that didn't make sense. If it's not effective as a detention basin. Uh, and if we designed it to try to be one, it would fluctuate very quickly and the water would be 20 feet deep in a matter of a very short period. And we yeah. didn't think that was appropriate uh, for that neighborhood and that, that's our recommendation uh, at that location. Uh, the second is the 200 block of Chestnut. Uh, and this is, <coughs> uh, if you look at the top picture, you can see there's a large apartment complex with the blue line representing existing pipe that was put in. Uh, I believe that was put in by the property owner in the early 70s. Uh, it's undersized for the rest of the system, and it's busy uh, failing in heavy rains. It's you know, pictures in the uh, solid so photos are the the fairly yeah. dramatic. Pretty dramatic it, yeah. changes yeah. in a short period of time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, which makes me wonder: Can this wait till 2021? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's dropping it's, off pretty fast. Well, we, we, we move forward, of course, we're going to be talking to properties. We're going to need some level of easement permission. Right. But we felt it was in the best interest of the city to not undertake a project that starts out with, we want to replace the pipe under your building. That, that no, just, I don't think that's, that's a good that's idea. That's not a good place no. to start. I like the idea of redirecting. So, uh, <laughs> once again, it's a large, it's a large yes. uh, But you're the engineer. I don't yeah. know anything. <laughs> it just sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah, it, it, it was, this was all filled in, in, the, in the, after the 60s, and our recommendation is to kind of avoid oh, okay. to the best that we can with the red line. Yeah. That's not the final layout. That's the, kind of a conceptual layout we'll work through. The details in the design of the process. That's good. Uh, there's there's other viable options uh, that are outlined in the policy report. We can review those if you like. Uh, but uh, that's that's kind of where we are. Uh, everything uh, being uh, being equal, so we can complete the design of this yes. this year and, and construct it hopefully early uh, a year from now. Definitely a need for it. Mike, why don't you introduce who's oh, here? Oh, yeah, excuse me. I've got two representatives from the Wilson Justin Club. <laughs> okay. Charles Lowman, anybody wants right. questions yeah. of them? You, got, one of you guys want to send somebody up and just give us yeah. a little overview of, right. of what you've been doing? Just Yeah, I, I was pretty impressed with your report. Just give us a quick, quick, brief uh, overview of particularly the photographs were worth a thousand words, you know, in yeah. terms of the, the <laughs> line. Uh, I mean, yeah, because we had discussed this before, but, I mean, the photographs really brought the the importance of this uh, project to, you know, our attention. You can't you can't ignore that no. in terms of what's going on. Absolutely. Um Mike outlined it, the mm -hmm. pipe size for the main system mm -hmm. changes from 72 inch on the most mm -hmm. upstream side to right underneath the house, a uh, 48 inch. And so there's no known um, issues of flooding throughout the course of the system. But this, when we sized it for all the hydraulic calculations and everything, the 72 inch came out as the right size, primarily because all the roads of along the entire way there are pretty flat and so there's no clear overflow path. So if we were to undersize it, there's a potential yeah. that we could flood out properties right. around the area. So that's why we had to size it for the 100 year event in the end. Um, hmm. Aside from that, we upsized uh, the inlets along or we're proposing to upsize the inlets in order to capture more water because while there's no residential flooding, we were told that there's some local um, uh, intersection flooding in some spots where uh, inlets could be improved. So we're looking at improving the general drainage of the area as good. well. So sounds good. Yeah, I like the con the concept that you boil down to those four or five bullet points. I thought that's good. I'm in um, in support of these two design issues in terms of addressing them as you address them, Mr. McDonald. Um, I, I do have a question though in terms of in your policy report you had. How do these design issues fit into option one, option two, and option three? Do we need to make, are we making a decision tonight on, on, op option? on an option? Yeah. Yeah. On an option? Well, essentially, if, uh, if you feel that uh, the staff recommendation is the appropriate direction, that's all we need this evening. Okay. We will yeah. incorporate that into our design contract. 
so they won't have to consider maybe we need to bring back six well thought out alternatives we'll initially pursue this and see if, it, if we can make it work okay. on, on these two design issues yes. is that what you're okay mm -hmm. okay um, what about um, cost I mean we uh, do we have an estimate of um, for this particular project and will it have to be bonded because of its cost yeah, the, um, we've been meeting with Bond Council, and that's one of the projects that we will put out for bonds this year. Um, and we're going to, our plan right now is to pair this project with the Independence Court Stormwater Project oh, okay. to be our first stormwater bonded project because they will combined probably be in the $2.6 million range, which is well over two years of our stormwater fee. So this will be the first one. Uh, that we'll have to put out for bonds to be able to do a project of this magnitude all at once. And this is not something, and I'm, again, let the engineer speak to this, not something you can really do in small segments. You really need to do the whole system at once. Right. And which firm will do the, do we have to select a firm to do the design work? Or? Wilson will do Wilson. the design work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, cost things. Sure, yeah. 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 I just didn't recheck it, but okay. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I'm... I think we've got a consensus here of um, yes in terms of what you've identified as those design issues. I'm supportive of what, what the they presented. Yes. city engineer wants to do with yes. respect to that. And, yes. um, yeah. and, the, and the overall concept, anything? No. So was that, is that enough yes, uh, guidance to, yes, sir, to that, get that started? Forward? That's, a, that's okay. what we need and we'll move forward, bring back a design contract. Uh, as quickly as we can yeah. so we can get started. <laughs> Great. That'd, that'd be good. Thank you guys Thank you. very much. Yeah. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Next is to consider parking lot repair locations for 2020. Mr. Mayor and Commission, uh, the City Commission has now completed three downtown parking lot repair projects. Um, a couple of years ago, we decided to add to the pavement management program one downtown parking lot per year. The idea, not necessarily in all of them are reconstruction. Some of them have just crumbling curbs. They need some tender, loving care. Um, we've done some large ones to start off, um, but that doesn't mean there aren't um, other parking lots that have smaller repairs to curbs, concrete panels, some islands, some tree work that needs to be done. Um, staff is, I think, selected ourselves the first three based on some stormwater issues um, and some significant issues we wanted to bring as we get ready to add these to the pavement management design contract bring some options to the commission just to get a little bit of uh, input so we've presented four uh, parking lots that doesn't mean that there aren't many more in the downtown that that need some work yeah, that's why we started this program right. this isn't a five-year program it's a program that we probably will take 20 years to get all get to all of them um, but it's a good start, and again, if you look around, there's already three that have been redone, I think, that look very good. Okay. So um, I, I want to throw out one other item this year. This is the first year that we will be doing $2 million worth of work on our city roads. We went from 850000 and the year we went to $1.3 million, we also started doing 20th Street. 20th Street. Yeah. So that was, that was five years. Um, so even though we we're at $1.3 million, we were never really able to put those in the city at large. The commission um, uh, increased that to two million. Uh, we have 20th Street done, so we have that. This money does come out of that pot. This comes parking lot projects in the downtown come out of the two million dollars. Okay. So what we tried to do is give you a little bit of a cross section of projects. We gave you a large one that has stormwater elements. That's more of a reconstruction project, well over two hundred thousand dollars. And we gave you some other ones that are important lots, but that the repairs are um, less than a hundred thousand. Um, that are still meaningful projects, but could you know mm -hmm. give us uh, more bang for our buck in the in the road program? So I'm going to let Mike just kind of go through these again. This is uh, there could be eight on here, but we had to pick sure. four to make it manageable. So I'll let Mike go through through those projects. Yeah. Uh, Mike Hooper and uh, Mike Stephen put together the, the cost estimates, and uh, we've got some pictures. There were pictures in the policy report. Uh, I, don't, I won't go through those, right. but these are. Uh, uh, probably more interesting pictures than those. Mm -hmm. uh, the first the first lot that we identified was the uh, city hall lot on the east side uh, east side of the building. That's this picture uh, looking north from Shawnee Street. Uh, you can, uh, this uh, being city hall, you're right. looking, looking down and north is at the top. It's basically uh, this, this uh, south half of that lot. Mm -hmm. There are some limited repairs that were proposed for the north half, but it was constructed, uh, what, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. We redid it. There's some bad curb and a 
broken panel somewhere in there. But the bulk of the repairs would address uh, uh, this lot in the, in, that you see in the foreground here. Uh, the second one. Can I ask some questions? Certainly. Uh, on the first one, the East City uh, Hall parking lot, I mean, there are some significant stormwater uh, challenges that would have to be dealt with, isn't it? Because I've heard that when it really rains hard, you know, uh, a, a lot of an intense rain in a short period of time that, I mean, there is a lot of water that kind of runs down to 4th Street and, and uh, kind of, it, it, in some cases, inundates the... Does it bother, bother yeah. that lot? The, the water. This lot's a problem in itself. There aren't some yeah. any stormwater systems within the boundaries of this lot or close to it. Yeah. So it makes handling that stormwater a real challenge. And it the mm -hmm. way it's designed now, the stormwater actually runs down the alley to 4th Street. Okay. And, okay. and it's a mess right there yeah. next to 4th Street. It is. Right. Yeah. 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 It runs down yeah. here, and the alley is actually building. slightly lower than 4th Street, so there's always a pond of water right here. Yeah, plus a big sink, big pothole. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think that is one factor in terms of contributing to the larger cost. I mean, um, right. What's the, what's the estimated cost on that? Or well, and one thing with all four of the lots we're mm -hmm. looking at tonight, they're all constructed of concrete, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which adds mm -hmm. some additional costs sure. and some additional right. challenges to sure. re right. repair of those. I think it's like 293. Well, yeah. yeah. okay. yeah. yeah. okay. I got it. That's fine. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, that's all right. That's why we're here. Uh, the, the second lot that uh, we identified uh, is uh, southeast corner of 2nd Street in Cherokee. Uh, this is uh, what adjacent to the uh, community college. We get up, uh, get up, uh, do the aerial view here. Uh, Cherokee Street's running east west at the top, and this is 2nd Street. Uh, Grinders High Noon was down here, okay. uh, down here. So this is uh, kind of the lot that was used heavily used by the students at the right at the, at the, the whole lot right the, the whole lot uh, since the community college isn't there anymore it getting a lot of use I think from other business and residents around there uh, this is uh, repairs here were estimated at uh, about one hundred seventy thousand yeah yeah it uh, you know, there's. The more you look, the, the more you can find to work on. You got, you got a lot of like mm -hmm. really crazy sidewalk here. These trees, I think, were planted in the initial streetscape project in '88 or '89 or somewhere in there. So they've had they've had a lot of time to get aggressive and push the sidewalk around. Yeah, a lot of elderly people eat over there at Pullman's and mm -hmm. park over there in that area. So it makes it hard for walking. The uh, well, that's. Yeah, this this is uh, northwest corner of Third and Delaware. Yeah. Uh, you're kind of the the back of the of the photographer is at is to the right. movie theater. Uh, this yeah. this yeah. this would be uh, Third Street and then the the, the so grassy the, strip. Yeah, line. the movie theater's kind of corner. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. this this yeah. is uh, was the, the act right. complex. So here's here's aerial view yeah. of it looking north. The movie theater is over here in the lower right oh, yeah. corner. Oh yeah. quite a bit. And, uh, and the, the hotel parking lot is just upper right. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, I think, estimated about 107,000. Uh, okay. uh, uh, it uh, gets a lot, of, surprisingly, a lot of use. Uh, the picture that you've yeah. taken here doesn't show that. But the, <laughs> no, uh, right. movies, I think, uh, it pretty much fills it up. Yeah. Right. And you think of even with the, you know, down at Tampico and Luz and all that, yeah. if, you know, yeah. a lot of people park down that way in a strategic location. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad when you look at this because the, the corners, the, the sidewalks well, it looks the so nice. the street yeah. is taken <laughs> care of, but the parking lot the, uh, sure and needs it. The fourth one that we've identified here is the lot that is immediately east of the Pullman. Uh, this yeah, is this Pullman is the one on I was thinking of when you showed side. that other one. Yeah, that's yeah. We, we worked on the lot. Uh, look at the aerial photo here. Or once again, the the top. this is the Pullman. This is the lot that we rebuilt yeah. two years ago, I believe. Yeah, three, two, three two years, years ago. Yeah. And uh, we were able to incorporate some stormwater uh, water quality features into that uh, nicely. Uh, we may not be able to duplicate that, but we're going to try to find a way to do that just because they, there's no close stormwater that gets expensive pretty quick. But it is a relatively, uh, comparatively, $76,000-something dollars. Uh, for this, I think it improves this walkway that goes through here. 
You're seeing these businesses come into the yeah. south side of the, mm -hmm. the landing mm -hmm. shops. Landing, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, That's a good point. Uh -huh. so and the trees are coming out too. I'm the tree, assuming. the trees would come out. Most of the the problem with this lot is on the south side of the lot where the trees and everything are. The curbs in bad shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, it is. Yeah, the panels have settled there. The entrance is not in good shape. The sidewalks so. in mm -hmm. yeah, pretty so rough shape. So you'd have to tear the trees out. All the trees would come out. Okay. We would plant new ones. They've different yeah, gotten kinds too of big trees. anyway. Right. Well, I mean, that. with yeah. the roots and everything, and it's yeah. disturbing yeah. the sidewalks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it happens. And we planted new trees on the uh, part that we did uh, yeah. a okay. year or two ago. Mm -hmm. There's a different picture of that lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. some yeah. concrete panel replacement and other parts of the lot. Okay. I don't believe there was a full pavement with asphalt over the top of this in these estimates. Is that no. no. These are just concrete repair. We can uh, we try to find a way, as we did down on 6th and Cherokee, to maybe add an asphalt surface pavement to it, but that's not included in these estimates. They're basically repairing or replacing the concrete that's, that is there. Okay. okay. I mean, and that's... Party, your recommendation at this point. I mean, just, just, yeah. Yeah, right. Just to I mean, we'd, we'd be paying more money if we went with the additional asphalt, right? Yeah. So. I think this so, sounds good. So, so yeah. Well, what do you? I'd like to hear from the, my fellow commissioners in terms of what you think. There's four good options. Good lay down on the options. Um, I, I will chime in, but I. First I mean, I like. like to hear from um, I mean, hmm. just the top two in my mind is the northwest corner of Third Street and Delaware Street. Uh, which is the one you just showed. Um, or no, that was the one uh, by the Youth Achievement Center. Right, and right. And then the other one, they just showed the lot east of Pullman. Yeah. Especially the one, just the very last one, east of Pullman. Pullman. Yes. So the, that, I think that, to me, that is the most and that, and critical. And, yeah, and that gets used a lot, even besides Especially Pullman. the sidewalks. I mean, I, maybe not the, it, the parking lot as much as the but sidewalks. But they have events down there, fits. too, that's good mm -hmm. parking in that yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. Those are, those are my two, so, that I think. It sounds like those are, if you had to rank your two top priorities, Commissioner Bowder would be the... My or, top priority would be the lot eight of, east of Pullman, the okay. last one. And if you had okay. a second priority, what would it be? Um, the third, uh, third, second, third second, second, second Cherokee. Okay. Second Cherokee. Those two. The, both of them on Cherokee. Both of them both, on Cherokee. Yeah, the two, okay. two that you have on Cherokee um, there. I'm kind of where Commissioner um, Leonhard is as far as um, I think my first priority is the Third Street in Delaware, uh, that uh, northeast corner across from the uh, new theater, $107,000. And then my second priority would be that, um, that east of Pullman, the second street in Cherokee, the half of the lot that hasn't been done yet, right. um, which is, I think, $76,000. I think that'd be a good one to finish finish up. Yeah. I I think continuity. right. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, if I had to make a proposal, um, and do we need and do we get any input from? So we do have one. Uh, Commissioner Wilson indicated support oh. for the Youth Achievement Center, the one next directly next to the Youth Achievement Center. He didn't rank all four, but okay. he indicated he that was that, that was the one he he was he was going to. Okay. okay. And the one by City Hall is. I mean, I know yeah. I park there all the time, and I know the the sidewalks are really heaving there in the yeah, that middle. No, it's um, thing there and that really that really needs some work and then when it's I mean right now I don't know how the the leaves well the leaves on the trees won't be there anymore but now I've been parking in a big pile of leaves right here on the edge <laughs> <laughs> and I've got them pretty well mashed down until the end, next one's come through but they just kind of sit there and the yeah. same thing yeah, happens the over there um, uh, on that uh, the other street down on behind a Prestige Home Care down behind the Heritage Center. They do that there too, and they just kind of sit there until we finally get somebody to come and clean them out, and people fall fall and trip on them. So anyway, okay. they're all they're all important. They so I, I would just leave are. it to the discretion of the yeah. I, I would, the engineers. Right. What yeah. what I'd like to I mean, we're not voting on it or important. anything, but we're trying to give feedback. I think. With the two million dollars in terms of our road road budgets, if we could deal, if we could do two parking lots in, would it be design and construction in 2020, Mr. McDonald? Both design and construction. Yes. Of, the, yeah. yeah was um, that, uh, would be the Third Street in Delaware. Uh, that's across from the movie theater. Um, Hundred and seven thousand dollars, and then the other one is finishing up the one at Second Street in Cherokee, east east of Pullman, which is seventy six thousand, which comes out to about. 
183,000, which is about 9% of our overall $2 million budget. Now, that's kind of what I... Are we just considering two? Oh, I thought it was just one. Well, I think, I think if, we go, if we go more than... We can consider to more. Which I just think it's just that it gets up there and it's going to take, it's going it's to chip take away from the, from street, the roads, from the, the roads road. and the streets that we have to make uh, decisions right. on later in the it's year. It's up to the commission one, yeah. two. I mean, we, we've gone with one each year, but it, you know. I, let's just do one each. Let's, let's just do, just do, do one. one this year. And you guys pick one. I, 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 I don't, I think the one by the Youth Achievement Youth. Center is probably not the worst one, but that's up to you guys. Consensus. Yeah, we'll pick one. Um, did, we get any, did we get uh, Wilson? Just, just, Commissioner just the Wilson. one from Commissioner, Commissioner Wilson. Wilson. That's just what I have. And, and you're good with that. I, yeah. I, I can go along with that. I think that um, in terms of, um, I'd prefer going with two. Just that at some point in one of these years, we're going to have to get to this City Hall East parking lot, and that's a that. I mean, that when, once we when we choose that, I don't know whether it'll be next year or the year after. I mean, that, that's a lot of money. And uh, so I was just, go ahead. Uh, well, I think if we just choose one right now, because didn't we have um, those engineers came in, and we haven't really seen the reports yet of what the study is on the streets through the whole town. To yeah, see they it. have the stand they tech stuff now, and they're working on it. Yet. Right. So, you know, um, if there's a, if there's a clear two, what we could do is and these numbers are generated by staff. These are staff estimates. These weren't Correct. done by a fitness. Um, we're pretty good at, at estimating Figure. quantities. We could design two mm -hmm. and come back with costs. Um, <laughs> okay. It's not going to be that much more in the design contract to design two, and we could maybe do one as an ad alternate if bids come in low on other stuff. Right. Um, we That's could look at something like that. Yeah. And then and then if we end up doing one, we already have the design done for, <coughs> for the, the other, other. one. We could, we could probably do something like that. That sounds like a good Mike plan. and Mike may not I mean, kill me for saying that, but I think we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could design okay, too. Yeah, that sounds yeah. that sounds good that, to that me. And it would be good. the third street yes. in Delaware, is the uh, is, and the other one is the second street in Cherokee, east of Pullman. Correct. It, yeah, yeah, we could design that's those too. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Okay, we'll add both okay. those to the design contract, yep. and you should see the design contract in the next thirty days. Hopefully, within the next two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And that'll be for pavement management too. Good. Okay, good. Yep. Okay. All right. Great. Good lay down. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Well, that's a good point, too, because the third in Delaware is right across from the yeah. development we're trying to right. have right there that's on true. that right. corner. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Another incentive. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, City Commission goal setting. Uh, I may have to do a little bit more right. work on this one. I think we've had uh, Commissioner Wilson weighed in when he saw the packet and indicated um, some of the times it didn't work from him. I think I've heard from Commissioner Bowder, Commissioner yes. Leonhardt. So yeah. I think I'm going to reach back out to the commissioners individually and get some okay. more input. We're not under a huge time crunch for that. Okay. So I want to make sure we get a date okay. that works for everybody. So okay. okay. Sounds good to me. We'll, uh, come that back sounds to good. That. good. So that completes our five topics for today's study session. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard, do you have anything for the, the good of the commission here? No, I do not. Not this evening. Commissioner Bowder? It was a great game the other day. Yeah, I'm so excited. I'm not, not going to the parade, but if any of you are going to the parade, be careful. That's right. I, I would uh, reinforce that. And a great thing for the, for the city of Kansas City, the metro area, our fans oh, all area. around, and particularly mm -hmm. here in the city of Leavenworth. So... I know a lot of them will be going to the parade, so be careful because the weather's not supposed to be that great. But I don't think that's going to de deter people from attending the parade. So, great job, Chiefs! After 50 years, right? Coming, yeah, right. coming back with the Super Bowl. That that's fantastic. Um, the only other thing I wanted to to, to mention was that uh, Commissioners Wilson, Bowder, and I attended on Saturday evening yes. a Leavenworth Community Service Organization CSO Ninth Annual Black History uh, Month celebration and dinner. Um, the the uh, CSO is a, and I, I didn't realize this, uh, probably Commissioner Bowder does, but mm -hmm. it's a consortium of 27 community service organizations that formed in the 2008-2009 time frame under the belief that by bonding together, the impact on our community would be greater than the impact of just individual organizations operating separately. So I was, I didn't know that, but it was a great well run event, great food, mm -hmm. some uh, sold great. Out. I heard it sold out. Yeah, it sold, sold out. out. It was over 200 out. people there, yeah. and a great meal featuring several soul food favorites. And we had a great uh, speech Speaker. by Chaplain Major April Bright, 
who delivered a powerful and inspirational message of speaking up, having a seat at the table, and voting. So it was a very nice event, and uh, Good just wanted recap. to yeah. uh, share Thank that you. with the community. So if there's just nothing... Just one, one or two things real quick. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no you're fine. Yeah. Just to let uh, um, our citizens know and our commission know, uh, we are joining the effort to help the Kansas City, Missouri uh, Police Department and Fire Department. We'll have four officers with uh, their vehicles going down to assist in crowd control. Um, and we also have a fire truck and a crew um, going down to man, I think, one of the parade. stations the mm -hmm. yeah, um, right. while they uh, the parade. So that's a mutual aid that we provide uh, to our friends. Um, if there's any question, the city is fully open tomorrow. Okay. City services okay. will run, trash, uh, city halls open, regular business hours, no issues there. Um, and then just the final thing is I was driving up 4th Street today. I saw uh, the Quick Trip in Lansing, our friends in Lansing have got going on. I saw the Community America Bank under construction, mm -hmm. Care Pharmacy under construction, and Stubby Park under construction, um, mm -hmm. all along 4th Street. So even in the winter, I think it's kind of exciting that it we have is. four big, four good construction projects going on on 4th Street. And so. we had a nice Absolutely. visit today to the Central Bag. Yes, and the mayor and I and uh, Assistant City Manager Taylor Tedder toured uh, Central Bag today and oh, uh, oh, talked good. to the president of that company about what they're doing. And it's amazing, amazing what they have going on back there that probably most of the citizens don't know about. Yeah. So so, That's awesome. Um, very, uh, very cool uh, okay. tour today. Thank you. Anything right. else? Okay, then we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.